What's up, Simon? It's welcome back to our weekly vlog episode. This week, I want to talk with you about success and failures because it's quite easy to look at successful people and uh, see what they've built, what they've done, and try to find hacks how they've done it. But usually what you don't see is that those people have failed really like a lot of times. That's what I want to show you today as well, because Although I wouldn't say I'm really successful, I'm kind of happy with living completely from home and doing my own thing. I have failed at really a lot of things. So today I will show you 10 things I failed at and also why each of them was really important for my own journey to become a better developer or to build out other skills. And so you can learn hopefully or see your failures from a different angle after this video. To give you some very realistic examples, I went into my own archive and found my biggest failures. So uh, first thing on that list is a course that I call Developer Blockstar. I think it's by now at least five, six years old. And at that time I got a little bit of traction with my initial blog dev tactic and I thought every developer should do this and I thought everyone would like to do this, but apparently um, that assumption was completely wrong. Um, the whole course, it made a few sales, but I wrote like a seven part email sequence, a big launch. Um, the whole course, as you can see, is made up of a lot of sections and videos, which really took me a lot of time next to my job. And I think the problem was people were not really looking for this. And also, if you take a look at preview, I think from this course is also my very famous, ex I, I actually don't want to turn this on. It's really, uh, if you want to see a compilation of old cringe videos, just let me know below the video. <laughs> we will do it, but today I will not do this. So what I learned from this course is actually um, structuring a course, uh, structuring your ideas, um, building a great online course on this platform that I discovered at that time. Um, and I also uh, released more courses later on that platform. I also kind of got into filming myself, as you can see uh, with these videos, uh, although they were really terrible. Um, I think it really helped me to get better over time. My second failure was a t-shirt shop. I think this is also like four or five years old. At that time I thought um, maybe everyone is doing t-shirts, maybe I could do some cool designs. Apparently the designs I got weren't really that cool, although I really got a few of them. I hired someone on Fiverr, I think. Um, I made a few of these, but all of them were really, really trash. You see, um, the result was really not great. I picked this one design, which was kind of okay, um, but I don't think that t-shirt shop made ever at only one sale so um, while I still do think perhaps we will do some kind of merch stuff in the future um, this was a complete waste of time in terms of um, hiring someone getting reviews setting everything up um, pushing out mails to my list really complete waste of time but this actually got me into uh, selling physical products uh, from which also the next project which actually also was a fail came out and that was an online shop um, using the drop shipping method. You know, years ago I was really, I think that's only two or three years old, um, I was kind of hooked by alternative ways of generating an income, not only being a developer running the academy. And so I tried drop shipping, which is basically sourcing your products directly from a Chinese factory. Uh, you can have those postings inside a Shopify store, you connect it and once somebody plays an uh, order, you can immediately send it to the dropshipper, they will create everything and ship it out to the person. I really like that, I put a lot of work in this before my daughter was born, uh, using her first name, but apparently uh, I closed it down. I made one sale from that shop, which actually showed that it's possible, um, but still the whole operation needed a lot more time. I think it is possible with dropshipping, um, and I really liked the experience of seeing that it kind of works, um, which fascinated me, but in the end I didn't have enough time for this project, and so it failed again. But again, it gave me confidence in the dropshipping and perhaps I will do it in the future again. 
Next thing I did was a huge vlog, which was actually like the version one of the vlog you currently see. It is still available on this other YouTube channel, which I never grew to more than 281 subscribers, which really uh, like the first hundred came on the first day when I announced it to my email list, but then it was basically the end. I don't know how many episodes are here. It's like um, a few months of my life. Sometimes the one one was actually a daily vlog. I tried to be like Casey Neistat, um, but later on I didn't have the time for it. Um, the views were really low, so I stopped it. But what I learned from this is editing videos, capturing great video material, um, getting comfortable with recording yourself in front of a camera. So all of this took really a lot of time. The benefit uh, in terms of subscribers isn't there, but I learned really a ton about filming myself and creating videos. And the vlog you right, see right now is the result of this vlog because this was kind of untargeted, more like a lifestyle uh, vlog. And now we have more developer focused vlog, but I feel a lot more comfortable compared to uh, these initial videos. Give it a try and check them out if you want to have more cringe. Um, once again, more material for our cringe show. Uh, next thing I tried was to create an Ionic Academy newsflash. I worked on this, well, I wouldn't say really long, but I actually got this nice little animation, which I still pretty much enjoy. Um, it made completely for this video, but the rest of the video um, was like, well, I gave it a try to be like a, the newsman, but it didn't really work like that. It had a low number of views. Um, not really a lot of people said, yeah, do it again. But what came from this is uh, I stick to the idea of having this Ionic news flash. And it's what you see, I think last episode was Ionic news flash. And like every four, five, six weeks, we have this casual show where I present you the new topics I created around Ionic or that I find online about Ionic. So once again, time invested here didn't really pay off. But what I learned from this is that in general, a news flash made sense on the topic and I embraced it in this course. Then I made uh, a lot of projects in the past. I think I've all also talked about this before. Um, with a friend we created like a little startup. We worked for a month on an application and in the end uh, we were too focused on one client so the whole operation failed. And really this took me a lot of time. This is the bad side. The good side is that actually um, actually the company should be closed pretty soon so we should get some money back from our account but that's only one part. The other good part is that I created or I took the code from that application and I built my own application uh, for a, the software startup manual which meant an application that would run as a desktop version uh, inside the browser or as a native iOS Android application plus a backend built with Node.js, payments, subscriptions, all of this included. I made a few sales, actually kind of few from that course. So I took this learning from the startup that we have built and failed and created this online course, which in the end um, didn't really pay for all the hours that I had already invested. But anyway, it was a kind of nice closing for that failed startup. Um, another thing I failed at was the Ionic snippets page. I've shown you this in one video and I can't show you um, the real page because I've actually taken it down already. So this is the only thing you can see from it anymore. It was a good idea. As I've said in the past, it worked for PHP or other platforms, but didn't really pick up for Ionic. But what I learned from this is I actually built this application, I think on a vacation in like two or three days. And it was one of the first applications that I really actually launched. And this gave me confidence for future projects where I build backend and front end completely together. Um, and well, the whole process of shipping your product and getting customers to use it is really an adventure. And this was one of the starting points. And I think still to this day, it's a good idea. Maybe I will do it in the future in a better way. Um, but it really helped me to get into this whole maker space and um, well, just release things. Now in that matter also, 
the Ionic job board, as you can see, I've mentioned it a few times already, it kind of failed. It really took me a lot of time to develop it. Um, then I released it, it didn't really work. I relaunched it with a few updates and new job postings. I made it free, but nobody really used it. Um, but what I learned from this application is that for specific uh, apps, there's really a problem uh, of chicken and egg. So this job board will only work if there are sufficient. Uh, <clears throat> this job board will only work if we have enough Ionic developers uh, looking for a job and enough companies to post uh, their jobs in here. And of course, one of these things is needed. Um, in the best case, we need a lot of jobs in the beginning so the developers come, but since uh, we have no jobs, no developers, and you see. But for the future, I definitely know about this. If I ever plan to build like this kind of marketplace again, I really know about this in the future and I've learned from it. Um, maybe it will work out in some time. I don't know yet. Um, it still works. You can post your job for free. Check it out, ionicjobs.io. Um, currently, I have just manually added this one job. Then I also learned something from building applications as a freelancer. When I got started, I basically took every job just to um, build up some income. And one project which I still uh, support up to this date is a project that includes a backend and a front end, and it's a kind of critical application. And the users of this application are mostly active in the evening or night. And in the beginning, um, my code for the backend wasn't maybe the best. Um, it had a few bugs, it crashed sometimes, and the application didn't restart properly. So what followed were getting emails from Heroku like this. Um, you already know what's coming. Uh, a few minutes later, you will get a WhatsApp or a call. You're perhaps already in bed and you have to support a running system. Be careful with the jobs that you take on and think about if you need to support a backend uh, or in general support a mission critical application. This can be really, really, really stressful. Especially if they have like strange times where you're already normally in bed and then your phone rings and you have to get up because you know they will not be able to work the whole evening if you don't fix this little bug now or just write better code. But this definitely helped me um, to think about which jobs to accept because I don't want to um, have a lot of these systems up and running that I need to support. It really stresses me out if I know that at any time something could go wrong and I'm responsible. So if you're alone or don't have a big team, be really careful about these kind of things. Now finally, um, what I also failed at are my own applications. I do have a few applications on the App Store. Um, this is like the latest one, which I actually use on a daily basis. Um, but well, in that case, it's kind of okay because it's helpful for me. But of course, it wasn't meant to help others. They're in-app subscription, nobody purchased them. This was just an example a few years ago uh, to show what you can do with Ionic. So in terms of uh, publishing apps, I also completely failed up to this date. I currently don't have any plan to um, build an application to generate an income because I'm, I'm just not that much into um, really shipping products as an application right now. Perhaps if I find an idea in the future, it might work, but for now, I'm focused on other things like Kickoff Ionic, Ionic Academy, and web-based projects. But also, um, releasing these apps on the App Store, even if they were just small helpers, or like this one, which actually uh, is a helpful tool for me, Help me to stay up to date with the publishing process for iOS, for Android. This project gave me the idea for the App Store kit um, because I really hated to create these screenshots and it took me way too long time. So every project really helps to get new ideas, see things from a different angle and really offers a way to learn something new. All right, and that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video about the things I failed it. Um, take a look at your own projects and where you failed and think about what you can learn from that project because a real failure is only if you don't learn anything from a project. In my case, for example, I learned from all the other launches of products that didn't really work out. 
I included you uh, the whole time while I was working on Kickoff Ionic. I built up to this launch date and I launched successfully and generated sales on that first day, which really made me happy because um, I had validated the idea. I included my uh, community in the whole project and this was really just uh, learning from a lot of failed projects. Make your own experiences. Don't get frustrated if things fail. Um, you can always do better the next time. If you enjoyed this video, please also leave a like. I know really after 50, 60 videos, I still don't know on which side um, the button is. So leave a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 100K in at least four or five years. We will be there, I promise you. Um, have a great week, uh, hopefully a bit more motivation this week and new ideas to look at your projects from a different angle and then I will catch you next week as usually. So happy coding, Simon.